Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. I'm Peter Gross, co-host of the original Wild Kingdom with Marlon Perkins and Jim Fowler. In the early days of filming wildlife, as you'll see tonight, researchers had to capture animals in order to observe and learn from them. But that's no longer the case today. Modern technologies such as drones and satellite tracking offer new ways to study animals in their natural habitat with less intrusion free from human touch. Wild Kingdom set the gold standard for nature programming and introduced generations of young people to the wonders of the natural world. Fortunately, the successful research that began with our original series helped many animals make a comeback from the threat of extinction. And that's good news for the Wild Kingdom. So sit back, relax, and enjoy Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom right here on RFD TV. Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is presented by Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on. Welcome to Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. In southern Africa, roam great herds of one of the largest forms of wild cattle on earth, the Cape Buffalo. This animal is noted for often attacking savagely and unexpectedly, but it's dangerous in another way too. Sometimes it's infected by the dreaded hoof and mouth disease and becomes a health hazard to other animals sharing its habitat, including domestic cattle, which feed on the same grasses. Recently, I was invited by the Botswana government to participate in a study of this problem at one of their wildlife preserves. Accompanying me was Roger Burkle, assistant curator of mammals at the St. Louis Zoo. One aspect of the research being conducted in Botswana by a team of veterinary scientists was especially important. This was to discover if the cow buffalo infected with hoof and mouth disease passed this virus onto her calf before it was born, or if the calf contracted it another way after birth. The team is also attempting to learn what other species sharing the buffalo's habitat might be involved, how the deadly virus gets transmitted from one species to another, and whether Cape buffalo and domestic cattle can safely use the same range. This is the fourth year of the hoof and mouth disease project being conducted here at Botswana's famed Chobe Wildlife Preserve on the African Veldt. We took off from the town of Maun in a helicopter and observed the wildlife en route as we headed for Chobe Preserve to see and study the buffaloes of Botswana. As we near Chobe Preserve, our participation in Botswana's wildlife research program is underway because we've been instructed to closely approach any wildlife located and note any tags or collars. Below us is one of Africa's most distinctive trees, the immense baobab, which often grows twice this size. Such trees are never abundant, and thus they're often valuable landmarks for bush pilots. Our pilot is flying low, so when we do encounter wildlife such as these giraffe, we can quickly move in for a fast look at neck and ears for Botswana game management markings. This one has no such markings, but it's a distinct pleasure to witness from this unusual vantage point the exceptional grace of its movement as this tallest of land animals gallops along so effortlessly at about 35 miles an hour. Since Botswana is the only African nation which exports beef to Europe, the research being done here at Chobe is extremely important. Our pilot is now flying us over an old burn area where the fire evidently went out as it came to this marshy ground. New grasses sprouting in such burnovers attract wildlife, 
so it's not surprising our pilot's soon overtaking a large zebra herd. We're watching closely as we catch up, but we're unable to detect any previously marked animals with red collars. Wildlife marking program in Botswana has involved even the largest animals. So we're quick to move in on three elephants moving through the marsh to look them over closely for large disc-shaped ear tags. They're not very pleased at our presence, and so after satisfying ourselves that none are marked with ear tags, we continue toward our destination. Now we're approaching a water course known as the Sabuti Channel, along which the camp is located a little distance upstream. For many years, the riverbed was dry, and then abruptly it became water-filled again killing all the vegetation which had grown so swiftly in the moist soil. The skeletal trees projecting from the water impart an eerie quality to the area now. Below is another unmarked elephant just leaving the Sabuti, and that's probably the last one we'll see this close to camp. We'll swing away from the Sabuti channel slightly and gain a little bit of altitude so our pilot can determine where the safest clear spot will be to land reasonably close to the temporary camp of the wildlife research team. There's a good open area just ahead, and only about a hundred yards away from the main tent area. It's been an interesting flight, but now Roger and I are both eager to see more of Chobe Preserve from the ground level. Before becoming very deeply involved in the Cape Buffalo Health Study and Research, I was escorted on a tour through the Great Chobe Preserve by an American Volunteer Peace Corps Environmental Officer. One objective here of the Peace Corps Environmental Program is to establish conservation education programs in Botswana schools. It's a joint program also involving the African Wildlife Leadership Foundation and the Smithsonian Institution. Donald Halloran, our driver, is the Peace Corps volunteer who's teaching the African children about the balance of nature and its interrelationships. Halloran is a University of Wisconsin instructor who says that when Botswana game laws protecting animals like these hippos are ignored, it's usually because the reasons for conservation are not understood. Roger Burkle points out across the river a pair of spotted hyenas. They're quite a common mammal here in the preserve. The hyenas have, in recent years, become subjects of extensive studies, and that research has proven them to be highly predatory animals as well as scavengers. They have a place in nature's balance, and this is true of all the different animal species of Africa. That's what Don Halloran is attempting to get across to the children, and it's an important conservation project. Still, it's only one of several conservation projects of great value underway here in Botswana. 
An entirely different conservation project is the principal reason for our being here. This is the very close study of the highly destructive hoof and mouth disease presently under investigation. The animal now believed to be the carrier of this virus in its dormant stage is the animal we've just encountered, the Cape Buffalo. Over 600 of these massively horned animals have been immobilized for pertinent serological tests by a scientist during the past three years. Cape Buffalo virus research underway for the study in which we'll very soon be participating is providing the best and most conclusive data yet obtained. The scheduled time for our arrival back at camp is approaching, so we're heading there now. First, though, Donald Halloran wants us to see a place where thousands of African finches roost in the trees. the main camp, we'll be meeting the scientists who are heading the hoof and mouth disease four-year research project. In charge of the buffalo exercise is Dr. Norbert Dreger, a German veterinarian hired by the Botswana government. And he works very closely with Wolfgang von Richter, who is senior ecologist in the Department of Wildlife and National Parks for Botswana. We're ready to begin the exercise. Roger Burkle is going along to assist von Richter in the overland vehicle, which will be leading the important ground surface portion of the research team. They're the ones who will be taking the various blood and tissue test specimens from the buffaloes, which are to be located by us from the air. We will immobilize the animals and then direct the ground team to the location. This is the highly maneuverable three-bladed helicopter used by the team in its research. And this is where Donald Halloran drops us off and leaves us to resume his own conservation education duties. The rifle used in this work shoots hypo darts loaded with an immobilizing drug known as M99. The darts are color coded for the drug dosage inside. Red for calves, purple for bulls, beige for cows. John Eccles is one of the best pilots in the business. The present program of the research team is to do as many cow and calf immobilizations as possible to determine whether the calf is infected from its mother or from other herd members. Today, Dr. Drager wants first to dart a large cow buffalo. Pilot John Eccles will keep in radio contact with the ground team and direct them to any buffalo we immobilize. Only a short while ago, a sizable herd of Cape Buffalo was sighted several miles east of camp. So that's the direction we're heading now. The animals travel in tightly bunched herds, even across open areas, and will appear to be a large black blotch moving across the sandy colored terrain. They're easy to see from long distances, 
And within minutes, we've sighted just such a herd. Cape buffalo are very powerful animals with enormous stamina and can move along like this for long distances without tiring. Dr. Drager's located a cow, ideal for the test to be made, and we'll follow, keeping her in sight just below and in front of us while the preparations are being made by the veterinarian to dart her. It's an excellent rump shot, and immediately John Eccles relays word over the radio to Wolfgang von Richter informing him of the successful darting and giving him an approximate location to head for. They're far enough away that the buffalo should be down by the time they reach the darting area. We maintained a close air-to-ground contact as we carefully continued following the darted cow buffalo until the drug took effect and she went down. We are flying over the downed buffalo cow and will continue watching her as we circle the area. John directs the trucks to the exact site. They're coming into range now, and this is where their important work begins. There's the buffalo. And the first thing to do is get a strong rope over the horns so Wolfgang can tie them to the hind legs as a safety precaution. In the event, the M99 drug should not keep her immobilized properly. This seldom happens, but the team takes no such risk. While we hold the horns, a blood sample is extracted from the jugular vein and transferred at once to a sealable vial for microscopic tests back at camp after the field exercise is completed. The blood, as well as other fluids from nostrils and throat, will, under microscopic analysis, show the hoof and mouth virus if present. Until tests can be made, Specimens are packed by veterinarian George McAllister in dry ice and frozen. Tested animals are always marked with highly visible collars for long distance identification and so they won't be tested again. The hoof and mouth disease program here in Botswana involves the Animal Virus Research Institute of Purbright in Surrey, England. It is tremendously important to Botswana because the country's economy is affected by the health of its cattle. Any hoof and mouth disease outbreak would instantly result in the closing of all slaughterhouses, the stopping of all meat exports, and the halting of all cattle sales. As measurements and tests are continued, the animal is kept from getting overheated in the sun by being liberally doused with water. Some very positive results have come from these tests. Proof that Cape Buffalo were unaffected carriers of the dormant virus came when cultures from apparently healthy buffalo were injected into cattle and immediately caused the disease in a domestic animal. The teeth of the buffalo are shown with an identifying number and then photographed by Wolfgang to aid in determining age. A ranger with readied rifle is a standard safeguard. Now, with the tests on this animal over, an injection of M285, 
which is an antidote to M99, is administered. The work with this buffalo is finished, and perhaps the test specimens taken from her will unravel more of the riddles that are gradually being solved and help eradicate the problem of hoof and mouth disease. The important goal remains, learning how the virus is transmitted from game to cattle. Through this research, perhaps the disease can at last be brought fully under control and Cape Buffalo herds will not be needlessly destroyed through ignorance or fear. Somewhat wobbly, the buffalo cow is rapidly recovering. Now we're ready to test other animals as soon as we receive further directions from the helicopter. With the ground team ready, we're again actively searching for more buffalo, this time to try for both cow and calf. Dr. Drager sighted another Cape Buffalo herd running up ahead, and with hardly an instant wasted, he's ready to dart a cow. It's another good hit, and within mere seconds of making that shot, the veterinarian is ready to shoot again. An equally fine shot on the calf. Once more, Pilot Eccles radios the news to the ground team, and immediately they're on their way. The herd split during the darting, but now the two running groups are rejoining into a single herd. Soon the darted cow and calf will drop and subsequent tests made on them may do much to help save both cattle and the buffaloes of Botswana. Through the animal health and conservation work being done at Chobe Wildlife Preserve, the Cape Buffaloes may well be saved from unwarranted destruction. It may also result in proving the safety of allowing herds of domestic cattle to use the same grasslands without fear of contracting the deadly hoof and mouth disease. Research being done by Dr. Drager for the Botswana Wildlife Department may eventually help to eradicate the virus. And conservation instruction given to the Africans by Peace Corps volunteer Donald Halloran may help to convince them to preserve the Cape Buffalo. Such far-sighted research and conservation programs being undertaken by the Botswana government are helping to show that man and wild animals can indeed live harmoniously in the wild kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, people you can count on has presented Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom. Mutual of Omaha, helping people find Medicare solutions for over 50 years. To learn more about plan options or how to protect your kingdom, contact us today. Mutual of Omaha, protect your kingdom.